the hot water diverters, are they really worth it? Do you get a good return on your investment? Should you buy one? These are all some great questions that we're gonna be answering in today's video. Let's go. So what does this do then? Well, this effectively harnesses any excess solar generation that's coming from your roof and it diverts it to that immersion element. So if you've got solar panels, your house demand would be met first, then that excess could be scooped up to heat your hot water tank. Take a shower without the grid power. So there are a few different types of these solar diverters. The one I happen to have with me here is the one that we install as installers but not all of these are intelligent. So if you have battery storage, you must be careful when you make your purchase. Effectively, one of these, we can program it. So what would happen if you had battery storage is, solar would generate on the roof, would meet your home demand first, would fill your battery up, and if your solar array is big enough, any excess before it gets sent out to the grid can essentially be used in order to divert that energy out to your hot water tank. This system can be told you have a battery on site so that your battery, when that immersion element fires up, the battery is openly aware of the fact that there's kits on board so they don't compete for priorities. So this specifically is the My Energy Eddy. And what I really like about this product and why we back it is it's manufactured here inside of the UK up in Grimsby. Their tech support is also based up in the UK. So we effectively get to support British manufacturing in the process. Moreover, I think, in my opinion, it's the best one that's out there because of all the tech that's built in it that enables you to be able to divert to that hot water element you get a mobile phone app rather than having a very basic, simple one. This is way more intuitive and we can program it around battery storage. So even if you don't have battery storage now, if you decide to develop that technology into your home and want to add it into the situation, you can effectively reprogram this unit to tell it it's on board in your home and away you go. So how does it all work and how does that come together? That is a really good question. We have to tell this unit what you're generating in your home. This is done via what's called a current tracking clamp. Now they come with one of these in the box as standard with a pre-made lead that goes up to five meters. So you don't need to buy any extra parts if your hot water tanks within five meters of your incoming supply, your main incoming fuse. However, if it's further afield, it's still easy to fit because my energy have very carefully created a what's called a Harvey, which is a wireless clamp. So this box goes next to your immersion element. We simply cut the feed that goes into your immersion element and wire this in and then wirelessly a signal sent to here. So when you turn a load on in your home, this system knows about it. When you're generating an excess of solar generation, this unit can pick that up and effectively discharge the excess energy into the immersion element. Now, one of the clever things they've done is started the influx current at 100 watts. And what this basically does is stops competing demands. So where we've got slight variability, it just saves the immersion element pulling in from the grid when it doesn't need to, or that excess is simply not available. And it can divert up to 3.68 kilowatts worth of energy between the two elements that's wired into it. The next thing I also wanted to note was the fact that this is a single phase version. If you're a commercial business, let's say you're a local tennis club or cricket club, and you've got big hot water tanks, and you've got a solar system, you've got rubbish export, effectively you can get three phase versions of these that can heat your hot water tanks commercially as well. Return on investment, I want to come on to in a second of when I think that this will and won't make sense. But the first thing I want to talk about is Legionella, because it's something you need to be aware of. I know a few people have essentially turned their boilers off from the start of summer to the end of summer. And that might not be always the wisest solution. These systems are designed to work in tandem alongside a traditional gas boiler. Effectively, when you have an excess of generation, this will divert that current out to that immersion element that I explained a second ago. However, you can still get cloudy days. This is where it must work alongside your existing boiler settings. So what you would basically do is look at when you shower throughout the course of the day or use a bath 
And if you're a morning bath person, you would put your boiler setting on first thing in the morning, use that hot water, that tank is now cooler, this would then top that up for the evening session effectively during the day. And if you've not had that and you still want to wash the pots, you could run a second boiler schedule after the sun's gone down. If you shower or bath in an evening, you might wanna skip that morning schedule and just simply set on a boiler setting after it's been diverted throughout the course of the day. Why would you want to do this? Effectively, Legionella can breed in a tank if your tank temperature is less than 60 degrees. And these are standard, unless they're fitted with a temperature probe and you set up a boost function. These won't always heat your tank up to 60 degrees. They're designed to work in tandem alongside your boiler to make it more efficient. So you're not drawing gas and increasing your carbon footprint for the grid. It's a great hybrid system. So if you're thinking of kind of heat pumps, for example, but kind of aren't quite there, but want to do your bit for the environment, this will work very much alongside it to really reduce that gas usage. But it was just something I wanted to cap off there that you must run a boiler cycle at least once a week to make sure that tank temperature increases to above 60 degrees because at the tap, you might be getting the right temperature of water for you to wash your hands, but we need to make sure that that bacteria is being killed at tank level. So you want to run a temperature setting via your boiler or via this system if it's got a probe fitted, and it's an important add-on that you would have to add on, up to and above 60 degrees at least once a week, just to essentially avoid Legionella developing in your tank. So let's just talk about the tech and what this little box is capable of. So as standard, this will divert any excess solar generation you've got to your immersion element on your hot water tank. However, what it can also do on the mobile phone app is set time schedules. So if you're on a cheap night rate and you're electric only, or you really just want to stop relying upon gas so much, I think is a fair way of putting it, if that energy price is cheap enough, it may well make sense to divert to the hot water tank to heat your hot water via the grid. If you're on Home Assistant, and I'm only gonna to touch on this very briefly, this system has an API, so it's very capable effectively of mapping to tariffs like Agile via the Home Assistant. So if you have a negative price on the grid, you could effectively tell this unit to be able to divert to the immersion element, and you would actually get paid to heat your hot water up. Now that's probably for the more tech savvy type, I'll be completely honest, but it was just making you aware that that is available with this system. So let's have a look at when one of these would make sense. I think there's a lot of stuff online that basically says these will never pay for themselves, but there are some scenarios where they will pay for themselves. So first scenario, feed-in tariffs. Most people don't realize there are two payments to a feed-in tariff. Payment number one is for the actual generation you generate on your roof. The next payment is a deemed export. This isn't physically monitored or measured. It's essentially half of the generation, depending on your contract, of course, half of the generation that's been generated on the roof, and we'll pay you a de minimis amount for this, three or four pence per kilowatt hour deemed exported. Well, that gives you a great opportunity because you can effectively still get paid for the deemed export because that's not being monitored or measured, and you can divert that excess solar generation directly into your immersion tank. The other scenario this could well work is if you're on a low smart export guarantee rate. And this is quite common more with businesses. Business rates are a lot lower. They can be five pence, six pence. And that's when these start to really start kicking in. I would typically say a smart export guarantee of 10 pence or less, which is starting to happen on the octopus flux tariff, could start to make sense with one of these and you could start to see a return on investment. Where they're more than 10 pence, I'll come on to that just in a second. The other scenario is where the export is limited. So one of the things that the network authorities are starting to do as more renewables come on grid is not necessarily restricting the number of solar panels that you have installed, nor will they restrict what battery size and what your demand can do locally in your home, but they can restrict what can be sent out to the network. Well, this comes in before the network. So effectively, solar panels would generate energy. That would meet your home demand. 
you would then have energy that's put into your battery. But if you've got quite a large solar system, this could then heat your hot water before it gets exported out to the grid. This is particularly good where you've got a big solar system, but a very limited export, three kilowatts or below. So one of the more common things that keeps coming up is independency from the national grid. We've all heard these news stories about the national grid, and this thing just enables you to be that bit more grid independent. So at this point in time, you might be thinking, well, I get paid more than 10 pence for my export. Financially, this is gonna take 10 years, 15 years to pay itself back, but the warranty is only three years. It's gonna last longer than three years on balance of probabilities. But this is where it's very powerful. Instead of buying gas in, which ultimately leads to a much higher carbon footprint, you can have a shower in the evening using the great green renewable energy that you've generated on your roof throughout the course of the day. And I think a product like this actually has a very good feel-good feeling without sometimes kind of going the whole hog and necessarily investing in a heat pump, which could be thousands of thousands of pounds. Now that leads me quite nicely onto price of one of these diverters. Now, different diverters will cost different amounts and for example, Solar iBoost or one of the other manufacturers may well be a little bit cheaper. But I think if you're going to invest, spend a little bit more and invest into the future. These units cost in the region of about 400 to 450 pounds plus VAT just for the part. And then you need to pay for someone to do it set it all up alongside your battery storage system. You may well need a Harvey, a wireless CT clamp. So with the Harvey included and an eddy and installation, something to note is actually, if you've got solar panels, it's VAT free, so we can claim the VAT back on the part. But with all these things considered, if you're not paying VAT, you're about 750 to 800 pounds fully installed, subject to the installation requirements. If you don't need a Harvey, it can be much cheaper. And again, if it's very complicated, more than one immersion element, a three phase system, then it could be a little bit more expensive. So they do actually stand a real possibility of giving you a return on investment, case specific, as I mentioned. One of the downsides and one of the drawbacks that you need to be aware of with an eddy or other hot water diverter as well is intelligent rates. So this is where your battery storage is forcibly trying to export out to the grid. Unless you set it up effectively with an API to tell it and use code, which most people aren't going to go and do, effectively this diverter may well pick up any excess energy that you're trying to forcibly get a credit for. So this is where you have a flux tariff or a demand flexibility tariff. It's trying to export, your eddy is trying to pick this up and send that current to the immersion element. So if you're on an intelligent tariff, agile export intelligent, not import for that note, a flux intelligent tariff, or you're forcibly dumping energy out to the grid, then you just need to make sure that your settings have been turned off when you decide to run that as a cycle. Quite hard to automate, so you might just want to give that a bit of consideration. So when does this not make sense? When you don't use a great deal of hot water, or if it's the case that if you've got a very small solar array and you're not really exporting anything because you're using it all locally, your battery basically takes it all, then sometimes these aren't gonna make a great deal of sense because effectively you have no need or requirement for one of them. Obviously, if you have a combi boiler, you've not got a hot water tank to divert to and you're probably not gonna go and rip out your whole entirety of your hot water system in order to be able to install one of these. This would only be suitable for those that have a hot water tank, so electric only households or bigger households where you have one of those hot water tanks. And lastly, as we've mentioned, if you've got a high smart export guarantee payment of above 10 pence, they start to have diminishing returns. But do note with that, essentially, there is the environmental aspects to this in that this will rapidly reduce the carbon footprint that you have. Other than that, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video and don't forget to watch some of the other great videos on the channel. Thank you.